Hi, I'm Dr. D. K. Vijay Kumar. I represent the I'm at present the head of surgical oncology at the Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences in Kochi, though I mainly concentrate on doing breast and gynec cancers. To answer that, I would say the earliest attempts have been made from the government side initially when they set up a lot of the national cancer registry program, the national, when they set up a lot of cancer registries because the first attempt is to document the disease. What is the volume of disease we are facing? What is the disease? So that was the attempt made by uh, putting in different population based cancer registries. But uh, that alone is not enough. Knowing the status is not enough. We have to bring about more uniformity in treatment, more accessibility to treatment and uh, make it more affordable. So one of the attempts made is by a group of oncologists across the country to get together to form what is known as a national cancer grid. Now this is sponsored by the Tata group and uh, based from its first uh, from Mumbai. We as a group all the practicing oncologists in the country from various institutions of countries get together and decide on how we can ensure uniformity of care across the country. So setting up guidelines for different cancers, looking at peer reviews at different areas in the management of treatment so that the treatment if a patient moves from one part of the country to the other they should get the same treatment that is the basic philosophy of the national cancer grid similarly also to help new cancer institutes develop to bring about what all are the requirements of an ideal cancer institute all these are part of the uh, initiatives being taken by the national cancer grid in the country kerala is generally considered a little more medically advanced in respect to delivery of medical care as compared to the rest of the country and it's no different even in the oncology scenario here. The, this is supported by a very good setup of government hospitals here right from the medical college setup and in the last two decades there have been a lot of growth in the tertiary care centers, in the private centers. In fact, Kerala can boast of a large number of linear accelerators in different parts all across the state and one of the things which has helped the state develop besides its uh, good literacy and uh, good uh, sanitation, good electricity is the fact that it's well connected. The Kerala, most of the urban rural divide is much less. The rich poor gap is less. So this helps to ha have a better delivery of healthcare. And we have found in oncology also, people have access to good centers in even uh, the smaller towns and even in the villages because a good quality care is being able to be delivered in most centers across the state. So I would say that in Kerala the scenario for cancer treatment is better than in many other parts of the country. Now cervix cancer was the number one cancer in women in the country till quite recently actually. It's only now that breast has overtaken cervix. There has been a fall in cervix cancer across the country in most regions but much more so in Kerala and while we do not know the exact reasons one can only guess that what is different what makes in Kerala the incidence is something in the tune of less than 8 per 100,000 whereas the national average goes to between 15 to 20 per 100,000 now. So why is there such a low incidence? One of the reasons if you look at the national family health survey which is uh, done by an independent agencies and we have got three such surveys done. the fourth report is just about out now and it clearly shows that in, in a lot of indices when you look at either uh, female education, when you look at education across the board, when you look at sanitation, when you look at electricity, clean water availability, uh, uh, availability of uh, toilets, all these seem to be much higher in Kerala than in other parts of the country. Similarly, there is uh, access to healthcare. That means almost all uh, women access for antenatal care, for delivery. So 99% uh, of the deliveries occur in a healthcare institution, whether it's private or public. So because of this overall awareness of women's health is high. And maybe this is one of the reasons why both uh, the hygiene and the health awareness contribute to bringing down the incidence of cervical cancer. It's also true that the age at marriage is going up, the age at first sexual contact is going up and therefore Kerala has possibly got the highest average of the 
average women's age at marriage being more than 21 now. And so it's quite likely that the incidence of HPV infection is also a little on the lower side because of that. And maybe all these reasons contribute to the fact that the decline in Kerala is more than in other parts of the country. I think the biggest difference is in two aspects. One is that the state hospitals or the government-run hospitals, they have to cater to a very large volume of patients. And because by the very fact that you have to cater to a very large volume, it's sometimes not possible to give that much of individual care and that much of better risk. Secondly, there is a bit of a resource crunch sometimes on the government side. So the development of more modern equipments, the upgradation of facilities does not keep up pace with technology. And this is where the private sector plays a big role. There have been a lot of private institutions in the Kerala and which were the state of the art is available now across the length and breadth of Kerala in various insti private institutions across the state. So there is availability of excellent cancer care facilities in, across the state. Even in the government sector, there is good facilities available, but because of the huge volume, the huge numbers, sometimes it's difficult to cater to the load and the waiting periods become unmanageable. The oncology department in Amrita was started way back in 2004. And the vision was to develop a comprehensive cancer center inclusive of everything from the radiation, medical, surgical and palliative care. The fact that it is housed in a tertiary care center in an academic atmosphere in a university teaching hospital makes it that much more easier to uh, sort of liaison with all the different departments. And very early we have realized the need to cater to organ based specialty approach for cancer treatment also. So thus now we are the first to start the MCH head and neck oncology in the country. So it's a training program. We have now planned to start the MCH in gynec oncology. We have a separate uro oncology. We have a separate neuro oncology. And so each organ based developed specialities. So the training is better. More people are exposed to such training and the way knowledge is expanding. It's difficult to keep up pace with all areas of science at present. So we have realized very early on that we have to be organ based and try to develop specialities based on each organ and similarly in oncology we have developed it. So we have within radiation itself we have people who are now looking after only neuro radiation, neuro oncology radiation, looking at only GI oncology radiation. Similarly in pathology we have realized the importance of having dedicated pathologists, oncopathologists doing only one area. So we have a separate gynec oncopathologist, we have a breast oncopathologist. This is what makes for more better improving the level of care. When you have the same person doing only one area over a long period of time, we are able to achieve quite remarkable, consistent and better results in all areas of oncology. The affordability is a motto which aims, tries to inculcate that everything that they acquire should be such that it should be affordable to an ordinary average middle class citizen. And even though all technology comes at a price, the realization that if it is maximally utilized, if it is utilized to its fullest, you are able to bring down the price. Thus, when we buy newer equipments like a robot or when we buy newer equipments in radiation oncology, the fact that if you are able to utilize it for a larger number of people is possibly a better way of utilizing it at a lesser cost so that more people take advantage of it. And at the same time, uh, we cannot look at only the returns from the investment for maintenance. Since it's a teaching hospital, we have to ensure that the next generation of students are trained to be utilizing each one of these equipments, each one of these advances in medical care. So AIMS does subsidize a lot of treatment to a certain segment of population, though it is also uh, true that we have to keep the cost high at certain places where uh, the population can afford to do it. So we are able to offer this type of dual pricing and still maintain a good quality care. The biggest improvement I think is in the field of training uh, and research, you know, because the future of oncology, while you are able to deliver care, it's essential that that continuity be maintained. You train the next generation to develop more and more into ex good oncologists, good onco 
uh, pathologists or good oncosurgeons or good radiation oncologists, good medical oncologists, good hemato-oncologists. And it's very essential that the training be as comprehensive as possible. That has been the motto and the philosophy. And so the advantage of having a university, a teaching hospital and a medical college and with post-graduation and super-specialization helps to bring in a lot of young blood into the stream helps to train it's a motivational factor for uh, senior people to teach and to impart knowledge that's what gives you a lot more meaning to the art of medical uh, practice of medicine in general